Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Um, this topic that we're going to do is a question that I've heard a lot, a question that I thought of one day, especially, and kind of gave myself my own answer. And then when I looked it up, I was sure enough just about that. But why do banks sell off uh, mortgages to other lenders or other banks and, you know, getting that letter in the mail saying, hey, your loan's been sold. So um, but Kirby, I'll let you start this one off. Yeah. It's really just about having capital to keep doing what you're doing. That's what that's the end of it. That's the end of it all. That's just the same way. So for your online business, why do you buy antiques that you believe are valuable and sell them off? So you can get cash to buy more antiques. So you can sell them off. That's right. that's that's the whole roundabout way of it. Because the thing is, if let's just use let's just use a regional, a small regional bank. If a small regional bank, you know, have a billion dollars, a billion dollars that they can give out in loans, right? And then they give out that billion dollars in loans. The business, the bank can't do nothing else. I mean, right. doing those loans, that is the big revenue generator. So if they hold all those properties on their balance sheet, then they don't have any more money to give out. They'll, Of course, they'll get their monthly drip and they can wait a while to do that. But they also hold on to risk also of the default and that stuff. It's other uh, facilitators and thing and uh, businesses that is used to being in that realm. They have the business model of, you know, getting that monthly payment, monthly payment, monthly payment and just doing that aspect of it, the service inside of it. The banks are just usually originators. Some some might hold it. I mean, Wells Fargo, they used to hold them, but now they've been selling off their portfolio. Um, uh, another one, Rocket Mortgage, they are originators and then they originate, sell off, but they still do the service to make you. I mean, so the 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 loan is getting paid to somebody else, but they're collecting servicing fees and things of that nature to run that side of the business. But they're not just sitting there holding the assets because they need the capital to keep creating the loans because their biggest money revenue generator is originating loans, not sitting there servicing loans after the fact. And then it's people that's called uh, debt investors. I mean, you know, you got stock investors, you got real estate investors, and then they have this thing called a debt investor. A debt investor buys people debt, and then they just want that that yield that comes from the debt that they're buying so they can con just continue to get that monthly drip of money coming in every month. And they just, their business model was set up that way. But what did you look up and what you find? Yeah, no, I mean, I figured like banks, they just want to get rid of that asset because they want to move on to the next one. I figured that rather than them say, take the chance or I wouldn't even say take the chance because not many people are trying to just pay off their house, but rather than, than, rather than them sitting on that 30 year asset, they'd go ahead and just turn around that asset to another um, investor, a debt investor or another uh, bank that is going to buy that from them so they can get it off their, their sheets. But one question I do have though, cause I, um, I didn't find this answer, but do they pay a premium? So like say, they give you a loan for $200,000, 5% interest rate. Are they, and say you owe $180,000, are they going to sell that remaining balance at a premium to uh, that next buyer of that debt? Yeah, it becomes it comes a premium because of the yield. The The person that they're selling right. the yield, the, the person that they're selling it to is getting it. So let's, let's just use, uh, let's use simple math. You know, me, I went to public school. So let's just say you got a house and it's 10% yield. Right? right. So so the person that's buying it, the person that's buying the debt is probably because they're going to pay a premium on that because it's, what's the name? So it's not dollar for dollar. They probably only get like a 9% yield or something like that right. based off of what they buying it from because they're going to pay a little bit premium on what the debt's left, and they probably get a 9% yield, 8% yield, 7% yield, something like that. But something that fits well within their investment model to get it, so they get to, you know, sell off the loan. But for banks, some probably even sell it at mark, um, mark to market value and just, just to get off their sheets, just to create that, you know, when you get that 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 final statement, it says how much for origination costs, 
twelve, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars for origination costs. That's right. the only thing the banks really want. I mean, the drip from the yield is great, but that's what they want really want. So let's say I'm loaning you two hundred thousand dollars, and then I'm making on origination costs. Uh, I'm making fifteen thousand dollars every time I loan to you, and then I can get that, sell that off to somebody, and then I got the money back to loan again. Just think if you do that, you and, and let's just say you're doing the same two hundred thousand dollars, you getting it, selling off, getting it, selling off, getting it, selling off, and let's say you do that five, ten times a month on twenty two hundred thousand dollars, right? So you make it fifteen thousand. You know, one hundred fifty thousand dollars just off originating, selling off the loan. Now you got the two hundred thousand back. You do it again, fifteen thousand dollars. Do it again, fifteen thousand dollars. Do it again, fifteen thousand dollars. You make a lot of revenue that way, just doing it like that. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the banks that originate the loans. That's what that's what they're doing. That's that's where their big run and turnover is. So that's why they want to get off the balance sheet faster. And the debt collectors love the drip. The drip is amazing. And the drip is the passive income that they're looking for. They don't want to be actively. They just want to sit there and just say, oh, that person who borrowed that money for that house, they pay me, they pay me, they pay me, they pay me. And then like in the business model of, uh, let's say Rocket, Rocket Mortgage, they service the loans. But when they sell off their loans, they guarantee the payment to the person they're selling off to. So even if you don't pay the mortgage, Rocket still has to pay the the person that they sold the loan off to. Wow. Yeah. And then, of course, you got mortgage-backed securities by the government and stuff like that. The government's taking on the loan. So they're selling it to the government and then they're doing it like that. And that's what a lot of the loans that's out there that's, you know, MBS and stuff like that. That's what when the uh, during COVID, the Federal Reserve, they was buying a lot of mortgage-backed securities. And that's just mortgage-backed security. All that is is just a big consortium of mortgages packaged together and just sold off as a package. The Federal Reserve was buying those also. So that's that's how that all works. It's always somebody on the other end of it to benefit from it so the banks can keep being liquid to keep giving out loans. Okay. That's very interesting. It's cool that it, it's interesting that there's like, we always look at like one end of making money, but there's people that, short sale there's people that buy debt like there's always a it's like it's cool that you can make money on the different end too that isn't well known i would say yeah and and stock market wise just the stock market wise and i'm bringing this up just to, so people can understand the debt market the debt market for companies that's on the stock market the debt market is three times bigger than the stock market so just understand it the stock market, let's say the stock market is worth oh, yeah. 50 trillion. The debt market is worth three times what the entire stock market is worth. That makes total sense, though. Because look at how much debt the U.S. has and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So companies have it. Companies have the same debt. And people, it's people on the other end of that just collecting, collecting that monthly, quarterly payment. And that's it. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, uh, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below. If you've got any questions, let us know. Uh, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.